I'm a working on the prison It's the true foundation I'm a holding up the blood stain Burning for my Lord Well, I'll never get tired, tired, tired Of working on the building I'm not going up to hell to go my reward, my reward Well, hello, my fellow Americans and fellow Christians, and thank you for joining me for one more day of peace and freedom here in the United States of America. My fellow Americans, all the hubbub concerning the false press and fake news is just a vivid reminder. We can traverse the sands of irrelevance. It is said Caesars do not cease to exist after Julius, and the global American citizen does not cease to exist, even though truth is presented to them. It is indeed a demented mind when veracity is presented and increased degeneracy opens wider vats. Never mind the deprived enlightenment, individuals might as well walk off into the accomplishment of the words thanks for nothing. We have reached a point in America where people have to be shocked out of their senses in order to recognize a need for change or to stand tall against lies and deception. The journalists today who see the abuse of their profession go right along with the atrocities, convincing of lies and deceits and false reporting. Journalists are subject to the higher law dignity, but they refuse the higher law comforted by their fellow immoralists who convince them of the more efficient engine of destruction. False reporting and fake news is not confined to the press, though. America is saturated within it in all of its endeavors. From politics to education, from the internet to television, from entertainment to sports, from business to religion. I can understand the average Joe falling prey, but I cannot fathom Christianity the steward of truth, righteousness, and honor, being governed by the deceptive standards plaguing America today. What I see is a world and a nation gone mad. Our government officials are out of their minds and seek not peace but unrest. Imagine, if you will, a world run by psychopaths. What so many desire today? And at the same time, you cannot claim to want the welfare of the United States while fighting the president of the country. It is a social mockery, hypocrisy, and unrest steeped not in political change, but personal vendetta concerning a lost election. This is tantamount of using of a losing baseball, football, or basketball game finding something wrong with every player and coach on the opposite team who beat you. It's not the players or the game playing that is at fault. It is the complainers who cannot stand the fact they lost the game. In their insecurity, they blame and protest everything they can muster in order to draw attention to the winning team as a savvy, deceitful winner of the game. Yet, the winning team never broke the the foul lines or the perimeters of the game. The protesting, deceits, and violence you see today is predicted by our Lord in the Bible. There is an interesting verse in Luke chapter 21. It says, Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged, with surfeiting, drunkenness, and the cares of this life, so that my coming that day comes upon you unawares. For as a snare it shall come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth. The protesting deceits and violence you see today is a prelude to the end of religious followings. Personal fulfillment, no matter what the cost, will be the future. There is something more. The wickedness of man will increase, as St. Paul said. And this is what he quoted. Evil men shall become worse and worse. And folks, our country is completely reflecting this. In 
Revelation 18, there is a reference to Babylon the Great in the end times. And it states, It has become the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. What it does not state is Babylon the Great will not try to defy these whores, but will accept them as a way of life. There will not be any defiance to these wicked and dark tidings. I do not mean to frighten you, but America is coming tragically close to mimicking Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. For America is prostituting the gospel of Christ, which the Lord has given to bless and glorify this nation. For the cares and riches of this life eliminates Christian character and accepting the ways of God Almighty. And the dark forces influencing the church and the nation are just like Babylon the Great. Trump, as I have stated, can only do so much. He can drain the swamp, politically work at changing the course of a nation that has distorted the structural rules of society. But he cannot change the character of man. Only the gospel of Christ can achieve the great interest of man by changing his heart. Christian preachers have forgotten that the great interest of man, Christ, is the only ligament which holds society and nations together. The gospel you see today does not convey this. A decayed philosophy and the nation in a continued march with darkness is the end result of a self-fulfillment gospel being preached today. It is perhaps too provocative for Christians to understand that enlightenment of American citizens is the single most omitted sermon in America today. It does not take a genius to understand the mystery of iniquity is at work in our country. Whoever dines on the distinction of character that Christ provides by faith in him sets themselves as an iron pillar, a brazen wall, a defense life against the dark forces in this country. What we are witnessing today are the dark tidings approaching in vast numbers and it is witnessed to us repeatedly in our daily comings and goings. Our nation will only survive if the message of the Lord returns to the pulpits across America. Our country will then enter a new dimension of thinking and character, detaching the old order and opening new experiences of the mystery of Christ with the power to heal our dark inhabited nation. Just yesterday there was the advertisement of a program that imprisons women abuses them, uses them for deceitful purposes, and if they refuse to participate, they are gagged and threatened with hanging or some other type of wicked torture. This, folks, is in our living rooms, influencing the youth of this country, not to mention the already demented minds plaguing this country. This describes to a T how our nation resembles Babylon the Great the habitation of dark devilish acts. I don't mind telling you America's future is dark and more and more monsters are roaming the country. And as I continue to note, if the moral and ethical leaders of this nation had watched, our nation would not be reeling in their failures to act. Not until the men of God, with vision and the knowledge necessary for the survival of a nation, returns to our country, you can count on a great menace in our nation being the grim reminder that we have no standards or ideals, just a more efficient engine of destruction. I hope this has somehow moved you to turn to Christ and are inspired to pray for this nation. God bless you and God bless the United States of America.